Okay, uh, a Blender tutorial. Oh my, <clears throat> certainly not an expert here, but I wanted to create something just to help uh, my current students, maybe some future ones. So we're using Cinema 4D's incredible MoGraph tools. Uh, Blender certainly is uh, outpaces Cinema 4D in several areas, I'll say sculpting especially. Um, but uh, uh, Blender currently doesn't have the functionality that the MoGraph tools has in Cinema 4D. But uh, we've purchased this little uh, add-on that does some of that functionality. And uh, I've just spent an hour or so just kind of investigating some of it. And I thought I'd record a little helper here. So I'm um, using the same kind of little swinging, looping animation, right? I just created uh, three little cubes uh, in here. And... Um, uh, they have a little animation associated with them, and uh, I've added a, a looping modifier so that it plays back and forth. I have also, just uh, to be clear, I put this into its own collection, which is helpful here in a minute when we do the uh, uh, the MoGraph tools. Uh, it's kind of like the cloner and the effectors uh, and the fields that you could use in Cinema 4D. Again, just a single developer doing this, so not uh, to the extent, but you can do some fun things. So um, I've got my little timeline. I'm going to pull it up here, and uh, what I really want is my... Just got this little edit here. Okay, so I've got my little uh, geometry nodes editor that I'm going to use here in a second. So I'm going to just... Put this one away for a second, go over to this collection, and let's uh, go ahead and add a plane in here. And I'm going to use that as my, uh, to build off my geometry node. So um, with that selected, well, I can always, let me unpin that. There we go. That's selected. And that will give me a new one. And I'm going to go ahead and pin so it stays there and get rid of the node. Put that over there so um, I don't need to see the plane but this is going to be the driver and the geometry nodes and uh, I'm going to add so out of the uh, geometry nodes oops I'm doing shift a there on the keyboard um, underneath this group this is where I've added this uh, MoGraph um, tool so uh, obviously to be able to do this you're going to need <laughs> Uh, this one, but uh, here's a decent place to, to start. So um, uh, The first thing I'm going to do is just get a cloner and in this one I want to do a radial clone So uh, a grid linear object and radial clone um, Just like you would have in Cinema 4D or at least similar. I'm going to choose that and uh, ramp that into the geometry and uh, oops, Let's zoom in here so we can see it clearer. So um, uh, here's that uh, geometry node. If I look underneath, there's a lot of nodes, right, driving this one here. Um, and I can select an object, and I can select a um, collection. Now, if I select the object, um, if I have all of this here and I were to select the cube, by default, it will not get the whole entire um, hierarchy. It won't put it in there. So I put this all into a collection, and that way I can come in and... Uh, choose the arm collection and uh, it comes in and it's still only doing the one uh, piece this top cube that's there uh, but if I go ahead and turn off the uh, pick instance I now get all of the uh, oops let's go back to the beginning here I have all of these in there and you can see that they're, they're a bunch of clones animating across the screen right um, Okay, so that's fine, but uh, how would I, now this is a radial one, and you can see all the objects are oriented uh, along the world coordinates. Uh, in Cinema 4D, that would not be the case, just as a default. And Cinema 4D also comes with its own little, um, uh, in the attributes, uh, a transform uh, section where you can offset you know, the, the rotation and the orientation or position or scale. Um, but in this little instance, I need to do something else. So uh, if I go back to add another, and again, that's shift A on the keyboard, uh, I'm going to go back and add a, um, a vector, and this one's going to be a target. And uh, when I'm working in the geometry nodes, if I put this over the line and I just click and let go, it will add this um, 
uh, effector there. And uh, right now it needs to know what to point towards. Um, I'm gonna hide my arm. I don't need to see that, right? So it's being duplicated. So the effector comes in with the target. It wants to know what to look at. It also wants to know what uh, axis to look towards. And just keep in mind that as you select these, um, uh, you can select multiple. You'll start to get some interesting but weird results. Um, and if it's facing the wrong direction, there's a little switch for the X, Y, and Z. Um, there's some changes to the offset. You have to keep in mind, like, what axis was this built along? Um, I did this right at the center of the world, pointing uh, down along the, z the, the Z axis here. So I, what I want is the Y to point towards the center. Uh, in other programs, that would be the Z. But now it's oriented it in such a way that I can move this. Um, uh, they're now radiating from the center. Now I can put, uh, create an empty object. Oops. I could create an empty and put it in the center and load it here in this field. But um, I don't really need it to offset. I just need it to point. And it seems like if I don't put a target in there, it just points towards the center the origin, and uh, that's what I want here anyways. Okay, so uh, that's the first part. Um, as I'm playing this, the one thing that I don't like is that as I play the animation, um, I created the animation just pointing straight down, right? So it rotates 15 degrees into the positive and the negative, and now they're intersecting with each other. So what I'd like to do is offset this with a little more rotation so that um, they were pointed, instead of straight down um, as the base, I want it to, to rotate out a little bit. So uh, I'm going to add another effector, and this time I'm just going to use a plane effector. So the plane effector is a kind of let's affect everything, and um, I will put that in here. And this one has some translate, rotate, and scale offsets, uh, and I'll go ahead and Oops, choose whatever rotation you'd see it's the X here right so I'm gonna put that there and now I'm getting the animation that I would want out of this um, yeah so there are things that I could do to add, I mean there's so many different things we could uh, add to this I could put a random node in here so that uh, it was doing a range of random offsets into this rotation so that they weren't perfect with each other. Um, obviously, I can um, let's make these uh, two, two, and two, right? So I can change the scale if I want to. Um, if I let's go back to just what that offset is, we'll leave it there. And maybe I'll even grab a A random effector and I'll put it in here and this time for this random effector I'm just going to change the uh, rotation just a little bit and the main thing is I'm going to change the, the scale there's a more uh, um, robust way to do this where I could create a random node and feed it into a vector and, and put it into the scale instead of having to, to dial these in uh, individually but anyways I just want to see that you could start show that you could start to put these together but um, anyways, so it's just a very bare bones but from what we were dealing with in class I just wanted to show how to do some general positioning of these. So I uh, created a, um, a geometry node, or sorry, a cloner node here. Um, I can change the count. Uh, I can do all these other things, right, that are kind of standard in here. Um, um, and I can feed that into the one effector for the target. That's how I oriented everything. So it was, um, as it went around radially, they were all oriented or pointing back towards the center. And then I use just a plane effector to modify that so that um, uh, I could uh, 
offset those with a little rotation so they weren't colliding with each other in the center. Um, range of different things. Uh, one thing I haven't seen uh, easily, and maybe it's something I could build out of the nodes, but uh, I have not been able to figure out an offset node for the animation. Um, uh, I, I can definitely see how to do that with some geometry nodes and other instances, but I don't see where it is visible here with the cloners. Um, I'll have to do some more investigating. Anyways, just a brief little start into the the JMOGRAPH geometry node cloner set. All right, hope that helps.